It's now been over three years since I have believed that the earth is flat. And like everyone else, when I first heard about it, I thought it was a joke. I really did. I, I began to see um, pop-ups on my YouTube screen about flat earth. I think I saw it on some other places. And I just said, what kind of joke is this? Uh, finally, I just said, okay, I'm going to look into it and see what this joke is all about. And I did. And um, I began to look at reasons people had about why they believed in flat earth. Or At that time, there were several people who have now become uh, very uh, prominent in the flat earth movement. And at that time, three years ago, uh, most of them were still even on the fence, a little bit on the fence. They wouldn't take that jump and say, yes, I definitely believe the earth is flat. Why would you? You have to leave an entire lifetime of indoctrination, an entire lifetime of propaganda, an entire lifetime of uh, brain control, mind control. Well, today I'm going to give you my top 10 reasons why I believe the earth is flat. And this is based upon what I've looked into for the last three plus years. And it's based upon reason. It's based upon simply thinking through the issues, thinking through things that were told, looking at pictures of things, pictures of the earth as it is, pictures of the earth as people want us to believe it is, like the pictures from NASA, pictures of the moon landing, which are obviously fake. It was obviously a fake job. And if you've not come to that conclusion yet, you need to look at, you need to look at the evidence better. Amazingly, that doesn't even fit into one of my top 10 reasons as to why I believe the earth is flat. The first, first reason is, is very simple. There has never been one scientific test or experiment that has proved that the Earth moves. They've tried. People have done various experiments and have tried to prove that the Earth moves, but they can't. In fact, my recollection is that Einstein came up with his theory of relativity because he couldn't prove that, that it was the earth that was moving. Well, the second reason really is a very good reason, a very profound reason. And that is that science's explanation of the supposed four different movements of the earth is ludicrous. Now, I had to write these things down so that I would get these facts correct, but I will put the link to a Scientific American article that I got this information from. So this was actually written by a scientist. I believe he was a physicist. And he talked about the different movements of the Earth. It's unbelievable that people believe this. But here's the first one. And everybody knows this. Uh, the first movement that, that people know about is the that the Earth supposedly spins on its axis eastward a full rotation every day, and that's how we get day and night, okay? If that's true, then the Earth is spinning at the equator at the speed of 1,000 miles per hour. Second, scientists say that the Earth moves around the sun in a nearly circular orbit at the rate of 67,000 miles per hour. Now, this is supposedly how we would get our changing seasons, that as the Earth moved around the sun, then the tilting of the earth would change. The way that the sun supposedly hits the earth would change and therefore give us the difference in our seasons. And so in order for the earth to go all the way around the sun within a year's time, the earth would have to move at 67,000 miles per hour. So we have the earth spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, and then we have the earth 
moving at 67,000 miles per hour around the sun. That's only two of the four movements of the Earth. The third, our solar system, the sun, the Earth, and the planets, Venus, Mars, etc., whirl around the center of our galaxy at 490,000 miles per hour. Well, which way is it moving? Is it going this way? Is it going that way? While the Earth is going this way, and then while it's doing this? So you've got these three movements going on, but that's not all. Scientists speculate that our galaxy is hurtling toward the great attractor, the great attractor. No, they will not believe in God, but there is a great attractor. And what is it? It's a region in space roughly 150 million light years away from us. 150 million light years away from us. And how fast is it going? 2,227,273 miles per hour. So we have four directions the Earth is moving from the very slow rate of 1,000 miles per hour to the much faster rate of 67,000 miles per hour around the sun. And then the whole solar system with the Earth included moving at 490,000 miles per hour. But that's not all. The whole galaxy is rushing toward the great attractor at 2,227,273 miles per hour. And the great attractor is 150 million light years away from us. How far is that? Well, a light year is six trillion miles. So 150 million light years represents nine times 10 to the 20th power miles away, which is 100 quintillion miles away. But we know, we know, we scientists know there is a great attractor out there. He attracts us, doesn't he? The great attractor, 100 quintillion miles away. Well, that's my second reason why I believe that we live on a flat earth, because there's no way. There's no way that the earth is moving in four directions at speeds that boggle the mind, speeds that we can't even comprehend. My third reason why I believe that we live on a flat earth is that there is a fixed order of the stars, the sun, and the moon. A fixed order. Men have relied upon the exact location of stars sun and moon for thousands of years in order to be able to navigate across land and sea. Mariners at sea for hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of years, were able to get from one place to another because they learned how to use angles, triangles, geometry in order to look at a star and then decide where to go based upon where that star was in the sky. Now there's no logical or reasonable way for us to even explain how could these stars stay in the same order for thousands of years? How could we have the constellations Orion and all the others that are out there. How could we have these constellations perfectly, perfectly aligned forever, as far as the memory of man is concerned, if the Earth was hurtling through space in four different directions at crazy speeds? Think logically now. How could it be that 
everything just happened to work out perfectly. That the earth is spinning, the earth is going around the sun, the solar system, the sun, the planets are moving around the center of the galaxy. And then the whole galaxy is hurtling toward the great attractor at a mad rate. But yet, but yet, we see the fixed order of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Boggles the mind. How could that ever happen? By chance, you think? fourth reason that I believe in a flat earth is that there is no Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect states that you have to make adjustments with things for the movement of the, to adjust for the movement of the earth. So for example, the earth is supposedly moving to the east at about a thousand miles per hour. And so if you have an airplane that's flying and that airplane has to land on a runway that's running from south to north, and it's coming in from the south, the Coriolis effect would say that that airplane has to be moving a little bit to the east in order to just hit that runway right. Because remember, it can't go straight because the earth is moving so fast. It's got to adjust for the Coriolis effect. Men shooting rifles, they say, have to adjust for the Coriolis effect. Men shooting missiles over in Europe during the war have to adjust for the Coriolis effect. No, they don't. Nobody does. Nobody did. Nobody ever did. When people learn to fly airplanes, the first thing they learn is assume that you're flying over a flat earth. Assume that you're flying over a non-moving flat plane. Why is it called an airplane? Because it moves in the air over the plane. Number five, the fifth reason I believe in a flat earth is that airplanes, you know, they fly level, right? If they were flying over a sphere, they would constantly have to be dipping their nose down in order to stay with the contour of the earth. Because if they didn't, they would shoot up into space, ultimately, and they would be so far away from the Earth, they might not be able to breathe. But pilots never adjust their noses. Pilots level. They fly level. They have instruments on board, gyroscope that keeps them level. They don't tip the nose down in order to stay with the contour of the earth. Then the sixth reason I believe in a flat earth, and it's so simple, use your mind, use your logic. Think logically, think like a human being. You know, we are herded like sheep and depends these days because we listen to lies and liars, and we let them deceive us. Open your eyes. Pray that God will open your eyes so that you can see the truth for a change. The sixth reason. There could be no independent wind currents on the earth if the earth were moving through space in four different directions at mind-boggling speeds. You'd never feel that cool breeze on a summer day. The butterfly, how could that butterfly even get up in the air? You know, they always say gravity is the answer to everything. How does that butterfly defy gravity? Where's its strength come from? How can it get up above the great force of gravity? But gravity is the answer to everything else I've said today. You, you better believe it. Anybody who's watching this who wants to refute this, gravity is the answer. Yeah, you know it is. 
You cannot have independent wind currents on the Earth if the Earth moved in four different speeding directions. You cannot have storm systems with independent uh, wind velocities and so on. My seventh reason for believing in a flat Earth is that water surfaces are always level, never curved. Water is always level. Why do they call it sea level? There would be no sea level if the earth were curved because the sea would always be at a different level. Sea level is sea level. It's at a particular place where everything from there is considered to be up or down. The Dead Sea, for example, is said to be lower than sea level. I happen to live on a plateau that is a thousand feet above sea level. But how in the world would you measure sea level if sea level were different all over the world? Because if I lived on a globe, here I am at the top, sea level would be way down here. A thousand miles to the east and 2,000 miles to my west. It would be down below me from my perspective. But no, it isn't. There is sea level. The sea is always level. And when you see water, it's always level. If you see a large body of water, it's always level. You never see a curve on the water. No matter how far out you're looking, you never see a curve on the water. My eighth reason, there is no observable curvature over either water or land. There is a geometrical equation. It's eight inches times miles squared concerning how far something should be below eye level from a particular place. The further you are away from it, the further down it should be. I'll let you look at some other videos. There's many on YouTube that explain how this works. But I can tell you that I have looked at a lot of videos that have used cameras to show that there is no observable curvature over land or sea on the earth. Now, the ninth reason is using legit, logic, I'm sorry, logic based upon these things that we see in nature. Logic says this. First of all, the logical proposition, and I did a whole video on this, you could look it up and find it if you want to, but logically, there is this. If the earth is a sphere, then there is curvature on the earth. Do you understand what that means? If the earth is a sphere, there is curvature on the earth. Okay? Now there is a logical theorem, logical truth. I have completed entire courses in logic, by the way. This is called the contrapositive statement. The contrapositive is this. If there is no curvature, then the Earth is not a sphere. So you know that it's a logically true statement to say that if the Earth is a sphere, then there is curvature. That is logically true. The contrapositive statement is also true, and it says if there is no curvature, no curvature, then the Earth is not a sphere. Now you can go to many places and find different logical proofs. I'm tempted to give you some here, but there's no reason to waste many people's time with that. So, if there is no curvature, then the Earth cannot be a sphere. 
And I have seen example after example, people doing tests that show that there is no curvature. Therefore, the earth cannot be a sphere. And finally, last but not least, in fact, in my opinion, this moved to the greatest ideas, except for maybe the second one with those four different movements. I mean, there, that just, it's beyond reasoning that anyone could believe that. But anyway, the tenth reason. All scripture references to the earth say that the earth is fixed and cannot be moved. Every single one. And all scripture references to the sun, the moon, and the stars say that they move over the earth. They move with relation to the earth. There is not one scripture, not one, that says that the earth moves with respect to the sun, the moon, or the stars. In fact, the scripture says specifically, the earth shall not be moved. Now, there's one great passage in Scripture. It's in Joshua, where Joshua needed more time in order to win a battle. It's, this is in Joshua chapter 10. And in Joshua 10, verse 12, Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still. He didn't command the earth to stand still. He didn't say, earth, stand still. He said, sun, stand still at a specific place. And then he said, moon, stand still at a specific place. And then the next verse says, and they stood still for about a whole day. He commanded the sun. He commanded the moon. God says in Jeremiah chapter 31, 35, that there is a fixed order of the moon and the stars. In Jeremiah 33, verse 25, he says, there is a fixed order of heaven and earth. There is a fixed order in the way that the stars move over the earth. That's how men navigated forever. That's how men knew where they were when they were traveling over land and over sea. So these are my top 10 reasons why I believe that we live on a flat earth. And I didn't even get into the lies of NASA, into the pictures that are ridiculous. Get yourself a good camera, a good telescope, and look at the stars, the planets. They do not look like what NASA tells you they look like. Why don't we go back to the moon? Why does NASA tell us we can't go back to the moon? Why do they tell us that we lost that technology? How did that moon lander ever get off the moon? What a flimsy little craft. How could it have gotten through what they say are the Van Allen belts? How can you have this atmosphere of the earth next to the vacuum of outer space without being sucked into outer space. Oh, gravity, of course, gravity. How is it we only see one side of the moon and always the same side and never varying? Isn't the moon a sphere too that's doing this? Are you saying it is perfectly to the millisecond aligned with the earth so that there's never any variation? How did that happen? That's as crazy as the idea of the stars remaining fixed while the earth hurtles through space in four different directions at millions of miles per hour. Use logic. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. Pray that God will give you eyes to see and ears to hear. 
so that you can understand the truth and be set free. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Amen.